Hey everybody, happy Thursday and welcome to Collider TV Talk, TV Talk for TV fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeFries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of television. Let's talk about last night in TV. Joining Ooh. us this morning is Josh McCuga. You were changing it up, Sinead. Yesterday was like the daily dose of TV or something like that. I like it. I like where Thank you're you. going with it. Thanks. Um, glad to be back. Day four of the live show. I'm psyched. We have a special guest, great friend of the show. Uh, it brings back those arrow memories. Brings back, and he's sleeping, and he's sleeping, and he's sleeping. Uh, oh, there he is. Hey, Jay, who is that? It's so early. <laughs> Jason Inman's back. Thanks for having me. It is it is so early, but I'm excited to talk about television. Yes, <laughs> and and our favorite, the one, the only. David Griffin. I, I have to uh, apologize to the TV talk community. I kind of had a little bit of a nervous breakdown <laughs> yesterday. I'm okay. I'm okay. I got some good food last night. I watched some TV at an earlier time than yeah. usual, so I'm fine. I got some sleep last night. I'm okay. Did you have the pasta sauce I gave you? I had the pasta sauce. Did you like it? Yeah, I made, I made it for uh, Liam, too. Nice. I loved it. Yeah, my good. roommate, so it was right. fun. Yeah. Good night um, of eating. Good night of eating. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say I got home a little bit late after the Schmoes No Show last night, and <laughs> I get to my DVR and Arrow's not there. And yeah, so locally, it was, uh, it was it was a Dodgers game. Yep. So the Dodgers Giants game took over. Oh, so I there was no happens. the hundred and Arrow. You had to go watch it online if you want to check it out. God, and the app didn't have it updated. No. So no, anyway, that's the bad I, thing when that happens because the app only it hits at like midnight. Right? Midnight, and yeah. who's staying up till midnight right, these days? Exactly. Um, but I got it. David sent it to me, so I did watch Arrow. And I want to before we move on and we get to today's news stories, I want to apologize because yesterday we skipped Twitter questions and it was totally my bad. Uh, I got really excited after Wednesday trivia and just moved <laughs> right on to end credits. So today uh, we have a, we have TV to talk about. We have some news stories to talk about. But you know we're doing an awesome segment with David, an awesome segment with Sinead, and then we're going to take a ton of Twitter questions. So if you guys want to ask questions about TV that we may not cover or TV shows that we haven't talked much about or our thoughts on, you know, comedies, whatever, send them in. Hashtag a Collider TV Talk. We're going to get into it. Uh, Sinead, what's the first news story? All right. So leaked from uh, my computer, <laughs> leaked from the Hulu <laughs> upfront. We saw a quick 45 seconds of the new Marvel series, The Runaways, and we're also treated to the news that Hulu has greenlit the pilot to series and will jump in the Marvel waters to compete with Netflix, ABC and Freeform. Jason, what did you think of the leaked footage? I really liked it. And I was surprised that I was going to like it because Runaways is one of these shows that people have talked about for a long time. This needs to be a TV show. It's an amazing Brian K. Vaughn uh, series. And if you can't figure it out from the leaked footage, it's because they're all the children of supervillains. It's not really a spoiler. You can kind of get, get that in the leaked footage. But um, this is such an interesting concept for a TV show. And these kids go hide out in, in the comic books in Griffith Park and figure out ways to defeat their parents. It's a great idea for a show. Um, but when I heard that Hulu was dipping their toe in this, I was like, I don't know, because they're not going to have as much money or budget mm -hmm. as Netflix. But that trailer, just like the Cloak and Dagger trailer, really impressed me. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, we hadn't got a chance to talk about Cloak and Dagger, because mm -hmm. I also love that trailer. Mm -hmm. This leaked footage, though quick and, and snippety, uh, had, again, that, a cool tone and mm -hmm. a cool look to it. And not only that, it like harkens back to a little bit of almost like a nostalgia that is those like 80s, early 90s, teenish coming of age movies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. that I, when we first started talking about Runaways, that was what I wanted it to be because I talked about that movie and people have tweeted about me where uh, the kids, the kid finds out or the kids find out that his parents are Russian spies and he has to take them down. And I forget the name of the movie and somebody tweeted at me before. So if somebody tweets that you now this morning, bring it up. But it was an amazing okay. 80s movie mm -hmm. uh, that my, my parents had me watch way before I was supposed to probably watch that movie. But this is what The Runaways reminds me of. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I agree with that. Like one of my favorite movies growing up as a kid was remember Flight of the Navigator? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's always about a kid coming up against extraordinary circumstances, having either overcome them or experienced them. And this looks like kind of like Riverdale, yeah. makes a little bit of Handmaid's Tale okay. because they had those red That's robes. That's interesting every, every, every combination time, there. Every time I see red robes, it's just like I watch like all these Handmaid's Tales. River Maid's Tale, if you River will. Maid's a Tale. River Maid's Tale. Um, and also, too, I think what a lot of people are talking about is that opening shot and you see the, the the cage, you hear that growl, and there is a dinosaur. They have a dinosaur yep. companion uh, on this show. So everyone's like, "Is that the dinosaur?" Like, yeah. how how are those special effects going to look? I mm -hmm. think the CW is proven, like with Gorilla Grodd, uh, the hundred had a big uh, gorilla fight scene. I think in the second season, and those special effects look really good. Beginning so I, the third, actually. Beginning the third. Okay, so you're you're, you're more you're, you're more recently caught yeah. up on it. So yeah. I think that I'm curious to see what it's going to look like on Hulu with their budget. I think it's going to look good. Yeah, yeah, the trailer looked good. And you know, we're going to get into Handmaid's Tale a little bit later, but. 
with the, I mean, I was pretty impressed with with how Handmaid's Tale looks. A little bit different, a little bit than than <laughs> Runaways per se, because you do have to get a lot of, mm-hmm. of special mm-hmm. effects in there. But who's taking risks? They want to compete with the big boys because we like the path. I know you and I really didn't get into season two. Uh, I feel like and it was just such a shame because actually I've heard that it's been incredible the last few. Maybe we should watch it. I don't know if I should get back into it because I was so disappointed by the first couple. Yeah, episodes. same with me. That's why I, I was like, "Are you okay. freaking kidding me?" Yeah. Hulu, but everyone's been saying it's amazing. Hulu also has eleven twenty two sixty three, yeah. which I thought was really that was strong. Good. I did yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that. that show, even like in spite of James Franco, because I don't, yeah. I don't think he's like a great actor. <laughs> right. But I loved that story. Eleven mm-hmm. twenty. What did you think of the trailer, Shane? This kind of seems like right up your alley too. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like it. I mean, it appeals to me. I might like it a little bit more than Cloak and Dagger, oh. which is crazy. Oh. Hmm. Um, but only. I, I don't know if um, if that will end up being the case because okay. I really do love my free form shows <laughs> and I, ho- I really hold out for them, right? I'm waiting for them to get another hit because yeah. it's yeah. been a little while. Um, so, how are you not just like the face of Freeform? Yeah, right. Like you should be. There should be a Sinead DeFries talk show <laughs> on Freeform. Um, well, I've been on the channel. I've hosted for them before. I'm, I know this. What I'm saying is there should be. You a should Sinead just De- run it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I should just be like, <laughs> hello, <laughs> cameras, me. Um, yeah. So I really, I really liked it. It's cool. There is a there's a franchise over at Disney Net right now, um, Descendants, and it's the kids of. Uh, villains and like princes, princes, right? Like fairy tale characters, mm-hmm. and it, it's like I'm I'm 25 years old, <laughs> but I will watch this movie. <laughs> I just did the the press for the sequel that's coming out, and I just I love the idea of showing like ch- kids well, of famous or like characters that I'm really that bring back a lot of nostalgia for me. Yeah, and that's why I think a show like this will work because you immediately are drawn to these characters because you feel related to them in some way. And also, too, like, look, if we, there at some point, some of these superheroes are going to have to move on and getting their offspring or getting, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you know, spinoffs and that kind of stuff, which is why when you talk about Star Wars and Happy May the 4th be with you, right? Mm-hmm. They always thought, who's raised parents? Who's yep. Snoke? This family lineage. Everybody's obsessed mm-hmm. with family lineage and how it works. And that's kind of cool that, you know, runaways are kids of this. And so right. and so are kids. That, that is a cool dynamic. I really kind of dig that. Mm-hmm. All right, Sinead, what's next? In news from Deadline, Danny DeVito and Jeff Goldblum have signed on to star in a comedy series in development at Amazon Studios <laughs> in association with Imagine Television. The 30-minute untitled comedy was created by Tim Long, who has produced almost 200 episodes of The Simpsons, and will pair Goldblum and DeVito as a rock duo who split up, hate each other, but must reunite to make ends meet. David, is this a been-there-done-that type of show? Maybe, but it's a been-there-done-that type of show that I want to watch. Okay. Because, I mean, look at the pedigree that people back is. You have Imagine Television. Now, Imagine Television, we talked about Genius the other day. Mm -hmm. So that's Ron Howard, Ryan Grazer. You have all these really big producers. Ron Howard came out and said that he wants to direct uh, a lot more television. He wants to be involved in much more television. If you watch Genius, it's shot well. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to do this. Why do you think that is? It's just easier, probably, right? Easier? It's just something new for him. I mean, these are guys that are at the top of the game. They don't need money necessarily, but they like to try new things Mm -hmm. like Soderbergh and these guys. Also, too, you have Dane DeVito and Jeff Goldblum, both of the guys, Dane DeVito especially with the last, what, 13 years on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and Jeff Goldblum is a funny man. You know, he he was in Jurassic Park, took some time off, I guess, if you want to say. Now you see him back in commercials. He's doing more acting. He's going to be in Jurassic World 2 now. Mm -hmm. He's a funny man. I would love to see these two guys together. And Amazon Studios has been making some very smart decisions lately. We have uh, Manchester by the Sea. Uh, I saw The Lost City of Z the other day with Charlie Hunnam and Rob Pattinson. Very good film. Really? So Amazon cool. Studios is making some very good decisions and with what they're picking up. So one this could of be my favorite one. shows, and we haven't even seen the series, just the pilot from Amazon, The, Mar- the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. I mean, they yep. are. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that show. Bosch is great. Yeah. Want, that pilot, yeah. Jason. I watched Bosch. it. Is good. it I watched yeah. it again. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I just watched yeah. it again it's last so week. And I was like, oh, do bad. I have to wait like three years oh, for this. Yeah, yeah. Man. Um, what it, uh, listen, I'm a huge. Jeff Goldblum's from Pittsburgh, obviously. So he's perfect. Um, but Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Je- Jeff Goldblum isn't in, in like a ton of comedies mm-hmm. per se. I mean, he's great in a lot of the um, uh, Wes Anderson stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. Steve Zissou and, and Royal Tenenbaums. He also showed up a lot on the classic Larry Sanders show. He really yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. He showed yeah. up in the league too, where he played one of the guy's mm-hmm. dads. Yes, the, yes. he was yeah. hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but Danny DeVito has kind of reinvented himself as this absolute madman on It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I know, do you watch Always Sunny? 
Uh, I'm, I'm way behind on okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So I've watched every episode. I love that show. And he has some of the greatest one-liners. He is an extremely talented. Obviously, Twins, that movie shouldn't work. When you yeah. pitch Twins, you're like, this movie's going to be the dumbest. Danny DeVito, mm-hmm. right? And he's five foot two, but yet somehow, you know, he's extremely charming on camera. This is the kind of duo that would get people to watch this show. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. you don't, you know, like, you know, who would we put in a... Goldblum and DeVito? Yeah, that sounds, you know? Well, yeah, the, 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 dy- the dynamic of these two is what I think is going to make this show so yeah. watchable. Like, the weird thing about it is is I I, I can't wait to see, because you know they're going to do, like, flashbacks to their glory days. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I want I, I can't wait to see, like, how they dress Danny DeVito up, because, like, I could buy Jeff Goldblum as an old classic rocker. I'd be mm-hmm. like, yes, acceptable. Danny DeVito is the one where I'm like, how did you make that band work <laughs> right. with Danny DeVito? Yeah. <laughs> right. I want to see them have, like, a an actual Hall & Oates kind of, album picture oh you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah yeah like the, those classic hall notes where they're both super serious if mm-hmm. you look at some listen i'm a big yacht rock fan uh if you look at some of those old yacht rock duos or like the the trios in yacht rock their album covers are so silly yep. uh it's it's really and you know their hair is going to be so permed and so <laughs> yeah. long mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes. oh man now this gets me really really excited about this series i'm glad you guys are on board <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm watching it all right uh sinead what's next all right so oh wait, yeah so we're talking about Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale. I was like, is there more news? Let's let's be honest. That's the most excited anybody's ever sounded in the Handmaid's Tale is wow. when you just said it. Let's talk Handmaid's Tale. I was just excited <laughs> that I found it on the page. Okay. So Did first you watch of all, it? yeah, yeah, unfortunately. All four episodes. All four episodes. Now I talked on Monday about how I uh, usually Jason, uh, and I, I don't know if I mentioned it while, mm-hmm. when you've been on the show, but usually I like to give a show three episodes before I decide what to I think or not that's to. a very fair rule. I think everybody mm-hmm. should do that. Right. You get three episodes. Handmaid's Tale lost me at the pilot, but Emma they Fife, dumped three. They dumped three. They dumped three, yeah. Emma Fife poured this into me. You have to watch it. You have to watch it. It gets better. It gets better. And you said that the third episode's the best, and I was like, okay, I'll get to the third episode. Mm. After the third episode, I was not on board, and then I finished the fourth one last night. Handmaid's Tale just got renewed for a season two. You read the book. Mm-hmm. You're confused on what they would do in a season two. I don't two. know where you take it to a season two, because yeah. I, I assume that season one, I, I'm not going to say what, it, what the ending of the book is, but I would, it's, it's pretty definite. <laughs> um, and I don't know where you go for season two. Like, mm-hmm. there is some stuff they could add some stuff on it. They're like, Leftovers, very famously. Leftovers season one was the book. It is the book of Leftovers. And the season two, I think, of Leftovers was better than season oh, one. Definitely. So they, they could pull this off. They could do something very interesting. But, yeah, the, the ending of the book's kind of definite. Okay. Well, listen, and I want to give a shout-out to Emma Fife because she she wrote me a very long email yesterday because she's not on the show today. She'll be back tomorrow. Uh, about Handmaid's Tale. And the importance with feminism and this kind of thing. And I get it. And, and, and what happens to women in the show is ridiculous. I just am really soured by the actual show, the production mm. of the show, the storytelling in the show. Everything in the show has bored me to tears. I think that the show for me, it thanks, I'm glad you mentioned The Leftovers, because mm-hmm. Leftovers season one, I barely got through. Yeah. This season of Handmaid's Tale feels not like the first season of Leftovers, and it's just, it's so dark. I mean, Lindelof admitted when he was writing... Leftover season one. That was one of the darkest times in his life. So he poured it out onto it the page, and it shows. Yeah. And it's just you just feel horrible after each episode, and I can only take that for so much. You know, I'm a, little, I'm a sensitive guy. You are. I can only take that for so much. Happy, so sensitive man. This show to me feels lifeless, and maybe mm. people would argue like David. That's the point. These women have been stripped of their livelihood. They're basically slaves now. But I've seen other instances of this, and I'm sorry for the if these comparisons are are are. I don't know if they're not pointing or if you don't agree with them, but you watch other shows that have to depict traumatic events, like maybe a show like Roots in the 70s that depicts slavery in Mm -hmm. America, or you go to films like Schindler's List. Those films make you cry, they make you angry, but there's also moments where they make you laugh, too. There is humor written in there, not to make fun or to make light of these horrific situations. But this show is just humorless. It is just tone. It's like Steven Soderbergh, very room noise. A lot of just quiet, you know, silent moments. There's dynamics in that room tone. there's no dynamic, and it's just for me. It just it just strips me of all emotion. I don't care about these women, which I know I'm supposed to. Now that being said, I think some of the performances are excellent. Yes. Uh, first of all, I love um, Alexis Bledel. Is that yeah. her name from uh, Gilmore Girls? Gilmore She's Girls. fantastic, of course. Elizabeth I think you're Moss. You're forgetting about uh, the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, but we'll let that. Sorry about that. Oh, but whoa. also, also Elizabeth Moss from you know from Mad Men, of course, and West Wing. And, and West Wing, West uh, Wing. Uh, <laughs> Top of the Lake. Yeah. Top, of, Top the of the Lake. You know that uh, she's a great actress. They're all very talented women in this show, but yeah. I just don't. I'm not feeling for them, and maybe that's my fault. Maybe that's just me, but I, I just don't feel any emotion towards them right now. Here's here's the thing, and. And I said this before the camera's rolling, and I'll repeat it. 
I appreciate <clears throat> IP. I appreciate novels and literature and what they do. But if I am watching a show and I have not read the book, and somebody's like, well, in the book this happens, they tell it a lot better, you have to keep watching the show. That is not a selling point for me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, okay, listen, I, the, the feminism movement and, and what is happening... There is no way that if in America something... Because they haven't showed us why this has happened. They've showed us snippets of a flashback of like, one day somebody just came in and said, like, hey, like all the women are fired from this job. Why? And you're talking about this is in America? There is no possible way that if somebody just came in and said all the women are fired, the entire country, men and women, would totally revolt. This is not... And this is supposed to take place now? Listen, if this was another world and another planet... And I understand countries going under Sharia law. This may be a lot closer to home, but this is supposed to take place in America, and they are showing the internet, and mm -hmm. they are showing other countries that are like, "Oh, they're finding out about what's happening here." Well, well, so, talk about genius. Talk about where you're. Yeah, because was. okay, when the Nazi Party started with Hitler, it took a solid twenty plus years to put Hitler in power, and you're telling me this happened in like a week. Like one day they based it like a year or two. We years. don't get a timeline. We don't yeah, get they don't, a timeline. Don't give us a timeline but yeah. you would think that they would show something. But again, like the, the, this is what frustrates me to this point is I haven't been giving a story so I can care about why these women were put mm -hmm. in this situation. And mm -hmm. and that when you guys told me that because I ha I haven't seen the show yet. Uh, when you guys told me because I asked you well four episodes in have they told you what happened yet? Mm -hmm. And you said no. That to me reeks of bad storytelling. It's really because it's is. in the it is a very deep world, and yeah. you need a lot of exposition. And that to me would be something that you would show in the pilot. Yeah, yeah. And, and apparently, four episodes in, you still don't know. And at the that's end crazy. of the fourth episode, yeah. she's ta she says that Latin word that's like, what, d "World won't grind me down." Yeah, or don't don't let the bastards grind you down. Don't let yes. the bastards yeah. grind you down, right? And all these handmaids are like walking, like, "Don't grind me down, bitches!" Right as they're walking out. But they're like we saw them try to revolt one time, and they were, and they were. It just I I don't know where this goes, and I don't know. We haven't seen anybody else in the resistance. The one person that tried to resist, mm -hmm. Alexis Bledel, had got a mask on her face, and that was that. At, we, listen, we are still in the same place we were four episodes ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I just it's such a hard show to watch because it's like when you see tough subject matter being displayed on television, you, you definitely think you should feel something if you're watching a food documentary, if you're yeah. watching a documentary on World War II. It's like, obviously, these are horrific times. You want to feel something. But when I'm watching this on screen, like, there's women that get raped. Yeah. You know, that should be a horrific experience. And I think about episodes that dealt with that. Sopranos had this one of my favorite episodes of all time in Sopranos. It's called Employee of the Month, I believe is what it's called, in season yeah. three. That is one of the hardest rape scenes I've ever seen, like, hardest to watch I've ever seen on television. I felt, I cried, I think, during that episode. This, I'm watching it happen. I just, I just don't care. Well, yeah. I and I feel bad for not caring because I'm like, I should care. Mm -hmm. That's a horrible thing that's happening. And I want, like, I and I feel bad that it's three men sitting around I know, talking about course, this, yeah. this feminist thing. And right. A, a, about a show about feminine, and you you know, I, maybe we don't get it. Well, I was gonna say, like again, as a person who's read the book, I will I will put this out there as as the recommendation for this week's Collider uh, book talk. Um, <laughs> David, Griffin. you're gonna be my special guest this yes. week. We, we this, will read the book. This book, we will read the book. This book, <laughs> if you haven't read it, I think everybody should read this book. It mm -hmm. is it is very similar to 1984. It is one of these books that if you look at it, it kind of expands your mind. And for men and women, I think. Everyone should read this book. The book I thought was great. So okay. it, it's sad to hear that the show isn't. Yeah, interesting. Um, because I really wanted to like it and I want to try to like it because, again, I think it's a, a crazy and very important thing that, that we should talk about. And so that something like this doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. Like something like this never does happen. Yeah. And I think we're at a place in our world that if something, uh, again, I, I just, it, it really upsets me because I want to like it. Uh, before we go on to Fargo. <laughs> Um, I know that was a great transition. <laughs> uh, you're welcome, TV Talk audience. Um, thank you guys for watching, of course. We, we, right before, I guess, the show, we didn't know if we were going to do it, but we had the Inhumans artwork drop. There it is. There's a picture of Anson Mount in this black bolt. God, that guy's good looking. Yeah, I want that jacket. Yeah, that jacket's awesome. I want that jacket. Holy moly. Uh, that looks like a Mark Riley special. Um, the, the cast looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love Ken Long. Um, I mean, this this whole thing. This is a good look for the Inhumans because it really invokes the comic books a lot, but yeah. it also doesn't look ridiculous in live mm -hmm. action. Like none of nothing in that picture looks. Oh, that looks stupid. Right. It no, looks like right. oh, that actually looks pretty good. And I would buy that you're a weird Game of Thronesy alien kingdom on Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hundred percent, David. No, I, I love the artwork. Um, 
I mean, sorry, the costumes. Because sometimes when you see costumes like in movie posters, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, let's wait to see what it looks like in live action. Maybe it'll look better. Like but when like they you released said, that picture of Jeff Goldblum in Thor Ragnarok. Exactly. It looked yeah. a little silly, but this looks ready to go right now. Like, it looks good. Like, this would be great cosplay. Yeah. I'm sure somebody's designed the cosplay for this right now. I'm, I'm excited to see this. Sneed, what do you think? Uh, I, I like it. I don't okay. love it. Like, I'm not okay. obsessed with it. Um, what about that dress, though? Yeah, like, it's cool. I, listen. <laughs> She's not <laughs> rocking listen. it. She's not wearing that dress. No, Entertainment Weekly it. covers to me are never good. Like, mm -hmm. you know. I've heard Dennis. Yes, this okay. is yeah. Entertainment yeah. Weekly. Um, in, in my personal opinion, it always looks like so forced. And um, like I'm looking at the cover of like a soap opera, like mm -hmm. season eight mm -hmm. of a soap opera. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not totally <clears throat> sold based on this picture alone. Okay. I've seen plenty of EW covers of movies that I ended up loving, but when I saw that cover, I was like, this looks ridiculous. Okay. Hmm. Um, so it, it doesn't mean anything, but right now I'm not totally sold on it. Uh, I, I need to see them like more, like less trying. Mm. You know? Less trying, mm -hmm. more. Just being. Mm, being. We're human beings, not Got human it. doings. Got it. Well said, Sinead. Thanks. Well said. Uh, let's go to Fargo. Fargo's last night's episode took place here in our uh, our lovely home city of Los Angeles, California. Um, oh, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Kaden. Uh, poor, oh, Kaden. Okay. Poor, you know, you, you got to give, we talked about Always Sunny earlier with the Dane Dan DeVito go. Listen, Rob McElhinney, who plays Mac on Always Sunny, played that doocy mustachio cop perfectly in 2010 Los Angeles, talking about Facebook. Uh, I love his Under Armour. Yes. He's wearing, too. Yes. Got to wear an Under Armour t-shirt to the bar. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the whole SantaCon, everything about this show Santa invokes God, a perfectly weird... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a perfectly... It doesn't matter if they're in Minnesota or Los Angeles. No. A perfectly weird, skewed v view on how society... Actually, is mm -hmm. what do you think mm -hmm. of this episode? I you, you know, love this show, right? Oh yeah, I, okay. I, I love this show. Like so far in, I'm like Noah Hawley. You get an automatic green light on everything. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that this episode had a very Barton Fink type of feel to it, yeah. like a, like an allusion kind of to another Coen Brothers uh, production. And I think um, I can't remember her, her her name. The actress who is the lead right there, who's in the picture. Carrie Oh, thank you. Yeah. Carrie, mm -hmm. I think she is fantastic because she's also killing it as Nora Durst on The Leftovers yeah. right now. And mm -hmm. as soon as I saw the first trailer and she was in it, I was like, oh, I am in. So and then even McGregor's been killing it as well. But the, last night's episode, um, also I thought had a very Twins Peaks kind of yeah, feel to definitely. it. Like, it, yeah, it's interesting. And David, you brought this up earlier. Like, you like, Noah Hawley likes to play on this series yeah. and likes to give us different episodes. So sometimes it seems like the show that we're watching isn't like the show that we're watching. Like, mm -hmm. we talked about the moment in the pilot when, when we tuned in, and um, you and I, Josh, both thought that we were watching The Americans somehow <laughs> accidentally when it was set in Russia. Like, that's the brilliant thing about Fargo. You never know what you're going right. to get, and yet every time I end up loving it. Yeah, 100%. David? I feel like this thing with shows now, I think some showrunners are scared to try new things. I don't think Noah Hawley is one of those showrunners. He's a little more daring. I think he's on a network yeah. like FX that allows him to do that. There's mm -hmm. been some great promos, if you're watching on TV, of this new series called Snowfall that's going to start on Netflix in the summer about the rise of crack. And FX is marketing so smart. They give you just a little bit, but enough you're like, what's this show about? Just mm -hmm. like they did with Atlanta. Just like they did with Atlanta. Like, Atlanta. like yeah, yeah. when Atlanta started doing its promos, like, what's Atlanta? What's Donald Glover doing? Like, I love that they let their creators do what they want to do. They don't give them their time restrictions on their episodes when they submit a story it's like hey it's an hour and 20 minutes long okay, okay. Do an hour and 20 minutes it doesn't yeah. have to be that 42 minute mm -hmm. plus commercial time period i wish more shows would experiment like that and this just proves when a writer's good talented writer like yeah. noah hall he also writes books read before the fall to collider book talk it's a very good book that he wrote oh i'll take it out yeah before the fall right. is very good um he just does such a good job and i can't yeah. wait to see what he does next i have no idea where the season's going i don't either and that, I, I trust him though enough yeah that I think he's going to get us to a point where we're like, oh, okay, this all makes sense now, yeah. but I have no idea where we're going. And, and the toilet reveal of, of his name. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Stussy yeah, Brothers. Yeah. Or so, yeah. mm -hmm. Just so well done. The whole, you know, come out to L.A., you're the innocent mm -hmm. guy, you get destroyed. A story that's been told a million times, but really well done in this situation. And I got to give a shout-out to Fre uh, the actor's name is Fred Malamed, who plays Howard Zimmerman, a longtime working actor that's been in so, so much. Mm -hmm. He's actually in that, uh, the Maria Banford series. It was really, really funny. And uh, Francis Fisher, who plays the adult That's version, that, that, yeah. uh, the adult version of the actress. Mm -hmm. I thought she small role so well done. She is a she that that woman has been working forever, uh, and uh, you know 
I, I'm not shouting this because she's a family friend, but she it was really, really well done mm -hmm. in this role. And I thought that the girl, the un, uh, the girl who played the young actress, yes. that whole yeah. that whole thing, so believable, so well done, mm -hmm. and so creepily seventies. I think we're gonna yeah. see the guy that she met at the bar and on the plane. Oh yes, we're gonna yeah. see him oh, again. 100%. He's coming back sometime. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. he kept Ray, this Ray Wise was the was yeah. the guy she mm -hmm. met on the plane. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming you back. Know, yeah. You know, yeah. that he, you know that he's working for the creepy British dude, or he is. The head of yeah, or he's something. the head of it. yeah, yeah he's yeah. coming back because yeah. he's following her. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't get that seat next. It to also, him. it also yeah. too, um, like this episode kind of encapsulated a scene that happened in the movie of Fargo, oh. where because um, you know where she met her old high school friend and and the, in the movie and the high school friend kind of like opened her eyes to be like, oh wow, people are kind of terrible. I think yeah. her Carrie going to Los Angeles and coming back when she comes back to Minnesota, I think she's gonna look at Minnesota with fresh eyes now. Yeah, one hundred percent. Let's just go to Arby's, get some curly fries, and uh, milkshake. Life is good. His, yep. his is excitement. Good. His, Sinead just gave us a gross look about no, Arby's. You like Arby's? Don't no. Their their roast beef is great. I, we have the meats. <laughs> Every <laughs> FX seems to have an obsession with Arby's. They Ugh. mention it a ton in I baskets. Think it's intentional. They love yep. it. And the excitement on that Minnesota cop's face, like, oh, you're going to Arby's? Like, he was, he was <laughs> legit Arby's, excited. Oh, yeah. uh, man, that's me. Okay, uh, let's go on. We we rarely talk about this show. Uh, we mention it sometimes in the highs and lows. But, Sinead, what are we going to talk about next? The 100. Ooh. The 100, my favorite show on the CW, uh, the most un-CW show that they have, in my opinion. Really, is, David? It, it is the most un-CW show, if I can man, use that word. I cannot. It's, it's so good. So we basically this week, I won't spoil anything too big, but there was a conclave, a big battle royale, a, a fight to the death to see who's going to survive. Trial and by combat? Trial by combat. So there are many deaths. I won't say who, uh, but it's a, a, a fun episode to watch. Definitely a good one. Okay. I don't so, want to spoil too much. I want people to catch up. Watch the 100. Catch up on the 100. I watched a lot of it. And <laughs> Where are I, you at now? I'm like beginning of season three. Okay. Okay. Um, I've watched a ton of the, the hundred, and I, I really got kind of soured by some storylines. So I took a step back. I'll probably get back into it, and, and I, I'm trying to finish all of Twin Peaks before it jumps on. Oh, good, good call. Uh, and I'm loving Twin Peaks. That is one weird, awesome show. But when you say it's the most un CW like show, I disagree. But I agree. Yeah, but there's not, there's not always like, hey, could you clear the room? Let's have a conversation. Piano. Right. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You like no. slow so soap opera moment. None of that soap opera stuff in that show. I agree with you on that one 100%. What I'm saying, what, why it's unlike the CW shows, they kill people with abandon. They don't care. Like, if you're a series regular, sorry, you're getting killed. Mm -hmm. Like I And I like that because last night in Arrow, which we'll get to next... There's no Come thought Come that Stephen Amell is no, going to die. Gonna die. No, he's not going to die. Right? Yeah. There's no, no way. Yeah. No. What do you think? Do, do you like the hundred? I I have never watched the hundred. Okay. I am on the first, I am on episode zero of season zero. The first three episodes, <laughs> first two episodes, are a little rough. But you get to episode three, especially episode four. Mm. It I've in. heard man. about it. I've heard about it. But now I'm at the point with the hundred that it's it, there's like like you. There's so many episodes. And I'm like, yeah. oh man, it seems like a commitment. It really. It was it, a big battle royale last night. Mm -hmm. okay. Big big. They called it the conclave. How is how it. is this season going so far? What's trending towards the finale? Are we on? So I, there's the possibility that they call it prime fire, which is I guess <laughs> the uh, nuclear explode. You know the nuclear meltdown that happened uh, uh, several I guess a hundred years, years ago. ago. Um, they're worried that's going to come back again. Okay. And they're not really sure what to do. They're scrambling. All the tribes are just trying to figure out a way to survive, try to work together. And of course, everybody has their own interests at heart. Is you the know? hundred confirmed for another season? Yes, it is. Okay, confirmed. great. Yeah, no. No, I've never read the books. That should be another book talk episode. Oh, is it a book? It is a book. All right, it's a book series. Wow. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. Finally, before we get into David's most anticipated segment of the week, let's talk Arrow. Uh, my Arrow brother from way back oh, when. Man. David has guested on the Arrow after yeah. show from last mm -hmm. year. I this this. This is the, sh the season I wish was last year. Oh so my we God. could talk yeah. about this show right after it happens every week. But this episode kind of redeemed a little, a couple things from our t terrible season. Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So break it down for me. What were your thoughts on this, this week's era? Look, um, I knew going in that this was a bottle episode. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a little hesitant about it. But also, I'm excited by that because now I think the finale is going to be huge. Yes. Um, because they didn't shoot on a set that they didn't have. But I'll tell you what. Um, I thought this was a really smart way to do a bottle episode. Mm. Also, I thought it was like, finally we get to have this conversation about Elicity that we should have had in season four when yep. uh, Felicity just walked off. And it's weird that they took a year to have that conversation. But uh, real quick, 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 I want to yeah. give mad props 
to the aero stunt team. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. the fall in the elevator where they, they didn't cut. They had the shot. And a guy looks like he falls 20 feet and hits the ground yeah. was fantastic. 100%. Mm-hmm. I thought, yes, it was a bottle episode. But we had the same argument last year. Mm-hmm. You may have even been on the episode. Well, I'm like, hold on. So Felicity's walking away because he didn't tell her about the son that he didn't really have to tell her about. Mm-hmm. And he really shouldn't have told her about because of the danger. And we see what happens with the son at the end of this episode. We're not going to spoil it. But you know, if you watched it, you know what happens. What I'm saying is that you're right. We were redeemed because mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a whole trust issue. Mm-hmm. Is it a lame call? Is it a lame duck out? Not 100%, but at least we got something. Yeah, at least we got some closure on that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, all right. I'm just, David is our arrow doubter. Now, I hate to say this because I know the internet is going to come after me because the Elicity fans, oh, man, the they're passionate never come fans. After you, um, I'm not the biggest Elicity fan. Not that I don't want them to be together. I don't care if they're together or not together. I just don't need a whole episode dedicated to them. See, to me, this this episode put the final nail in the coffin of Elicity. Oh. Like, this says Elicity is done. We'll see. We'll yep. see. Uh, we have many more seasons coming to Vero, That's I believe. True. That's also, true. too, uh, I just you could feel again you could feel the budget you could feel like hey this mm. is an episode we have to we have to be in one set one location we can't have too many action sequences I mean I, I agree the mm-hmm. special the uh, fight uh, the fall was incredible fall in the elevator yeah but I just I, this episode just didn't it didn't do it for me mm-hmm. it felt like we're just like built it's like l- l- let's get to it we're almost there almost at the finale let's mm-hmm. get those big impactful episodes it's two weeks now no Bratva uh, and then also um, no Prometheus. And I think Prometheus well, we is saw, a great we, villain. We, yeah. well, see, uh, but I, I mean, I, I get it. But, but I will say that for unlike other bottle episodes that some shows do, where you're just like, God, this is a waste of time. I will say that they at least did the smart thing with this mm-hmm. uh, in that Prometheus is the reason that they're trapped. True. So that yeah. even though you don't see him till the very mm-hmm. end, um, you kind of feel his menace because he's the reason they're in this situation. Mm-hmm. Which I, which I give mad props to the writers for because again, usually bottle episodes have really contrived reasons why mm-hmm. they're stuck where they are. It's, uh, it's interesting, when, you know I, know, I know there's many of you out there that do the same thing that we're doing. When you watch a lot of TV in one night, again, I'm not crazy now. I got mm. my sleep, so I'm good. <laughs> but it's weird because you have to manage your expectations for your show. So you got to realize when you're sitting there on the TV, you're watching four hours of television in a row. So I watched 100. I watched Arrow. I watched Handmaid's Tale. And I watched Fargo in a row. It's like you're watching these shows, and they're very different. Fargo is mm-hmm. very different than Arrow. Arrow is very different than The 100. And it's kind of interesting when you're watching these shows, you have to kind of – it's weird having to manage your expectations to what mm. you're going to see. Fargo can be a little it's like more speed ex- dating. Yeah, they can be a little more experimental. <laughs> they can go outside the box yeah. because it's less episodes. They're not yeah. doing 22 a season, so they can do that. So it's not that I don't understand what Arrow had to do this episode. I just yeah. feel like they could have filled it with more interesting uh, uh, content. I, al- I also have a prediction. You said that we didn't have the we didn't have any flashbacks last week at all. This yeah. this this week was flashbacks to flashbacks, 11, yeah. 11 months <laughs> ago. Um, I think that the final season, the final episode of this season, which is titled Lian Yu, they've already put that out on the internet, um, I think it's mostly flashbacks. I okay. think I think the finale is like 45 minutes of flashbacks. Ooh, wow. I really do. I think they'll beat Prometheus the episode before the finale. Wow. I like. I, I watched yeah, that. I yeah, like. I'm interested in that. Um, well, that's that's our Arrow discussion. Uh, well, Jason, we'll probably have you <clears> on <throat> oh, after the, the finale. finale. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think the one great thing we got out of this Arrow one, the T-Sphere kicked ass. The uh, T-Sphere is always the good. T- T-Sphere was awesome. And the fact that Diggle and Lila didn't carry on their whole marital spat for like four more episodes. Yep. Mm. Done. Yep. It's over. It's over. We, we both do weird stuff and we both work in a shady industry. Let's call a spade a spade. Mm. Uh, all right, David. Here it comes, buddy. Sinead, what's David talking about? David is doing the first ever official Collider TV talk, British Breakdown. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were doing that. Like, da, 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 da. Good call. That's my, my bad. That would have been more appropriate. Yeah, I went straight to Jock Jams. I apologize. I apologize. That's my bad. Maybe we could do a techno. Ooh, um, yeah. we'll work on it. <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a bit of a scare last night. I was texting Josh. Yeah. And I was like, Prince Philip is dead. And then he wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Then he yeah. wasn't. Because that was the news. News was breaking that there was some emergency at Buckingham Palace. People thought Prince Philip was dead, 95 years old, very good life. But thankfully, he's alive. He's just stepping down from uh, political, I guess, activities. So he's not going to go on tours anymore and yeah. show up at public, make public appearances. So Prince Philip is okay. Old. 95 years old. Lived a good life. I'm glad that he's still kicking. Good yeah. job, Prince Philip. If I'm alive watch at crown. 95 and I have to be like, yes, I'm taking Watch the crown. Watch the crown. Yeah. Um, the British breakdown, hopefully we get to do more of this in the future. 
Uh, I think in the future, if we do this more, I'll talk about maybe a specific show. But I just want to talk about why I I love British shows. You hear me? You know, these guys like to pick on me, and I talk a lot about British television. Do I pick on you? You, you get a little bit. Oh. Um, but the reason why, it's but I, I can take it. But the reason why <laughs> I, I love it so much is because I think living in LA. Knowing the industry like all of us do, working in the industry, especially like, you know, Sinead, uh, Jason, Josh, we, we see so much of L.A. and Vancouver and Atlanta. Like, we know the areas of where things are being shot. We know locations. We know people who maybe work on the crews. And that's awesome because you have kind of an inside scoop on it. But it's nice when you kind of are able to transport yourself to somebody somewhere else. Now, maybe for those of you who live in the U.K., even if you do love the show, he's like, well, David, I know all those locations. It's like, same thing for you in L.A. But for me, when I'm watching an episode of Broadchurch, when I'm watching something like Happy Valley, I love being transported to a little small British community that I'm just not familiar with. It's not Atlanta. It's not Vancouver. It's not L.A. I'm not going to see a, a blue street sign for Olive when I'm watching an episode of Dexter that's supposed to take place in Miami. <laughs> I'm like, no, they are shooting in the location they're supposed to be in. Watching Sherlock in London or Luther in London, I love, I love the terminology different. The cops don't carry guns, which is because every time I'm watching a Luther and he's chasing somebody down, I'm like, shoot him, shoot him. And I'm like, oh, wait. Yeah. They don't have guns. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not NYPD blue. So I just, I love the differences there. Also just love their casting. Again, we talked a lot about CW I love shows. I brought up NYPD blue. I just had a label. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. NYPD, NYPD blue is a great show, by yeah, the way. Yeah. Um, talking about casting. We talked about the CW earlier. The CW, one thing they do do is they cast very pretty people. Nothing wrong with that. Not to say British shows don't do that. There's very lovely people on British shows. But I love that. British shows aren't, that's not their number one concern when it comes to cast. You watch something like Happy Valley. Sarah Lancashire is a very pretty woman, but I don't know if she'd have a lead on a CW show. It's not how they market their shows, but that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. David Tennant's a very good looking man, but he's also an interesting looking guy. He wouldn't, mm -hmm. you wouldn't call him a leading man necessarily. You could also make the same argument of the current doctor, Peter current Capaldi. Dr. Peter Capaldi. Yeah. Maybe yeah. not a leading man like Brad Pitt or George mm -hmm. Clooney, but in the UK, it doesn't seem to be as important. They seem to focus more on. Can you act? Talent. That's why when you watch Happy Valley, when you watch Sherlock, like when you watch Doubt, now you're like, man, everybody from the janitor who you see in one scene to Benedict Cumberbatch can act their butt off because they all go. I mean, they're just they're so good, and I think that's one of the things that separates British TV. Not that it's all perfect uh, from American shows. Uh, there's good in both, but I just love, like I said, being transported. I love the characters they build, the shows. A couple good shows to watch. I said before, I Happy. Say, can you give me? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah, give you some. Sorry, yeah, 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 give you a couple. Happy Valley is one that you should catch up on now. They're filming a new season. Uh, the first two seasons are out on Netflix mm -hmm. right now. Um, as I was saying before, Broadchurch, a yes. uh, new season. I think, I think it just finished airing in the UK. It's going to be coming to the yeah, US on soon. BBC yeah, yeah. America mm -hmm. soon. This new season of Doctor Who is good. I, oh, this is my great. first season I've actually ever watched. Oh, and I'm you know, and Doctor it's perfect right because now. the new season is built. Yeah. They, they built it around anybody can watch the show. So if you've yeah. never watched Doctor Who, and I, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, you can literally start with this season. Yeah, and also, wow. too, I want to say one more show I want to mention quickly. There's a new show coming tomorrow to Sky TV, which is called Jamestown. It's about the first colony in the United Ooh. States. Now, it's going to come to the U.S. at some point in the future, mm -hmm. but it already got picked up for a second season. Wow. Ahead of time. So those are a few yeah. shows to watch. Again, maybe in the future, I'll do a also specific show Luther? for each segment. Luther, yeah, Luther's always, like, in flux, because mm -hmm. Idris Elba's so busy. Same with Sherlock. Yeah. We're going to see more of it, but it's going to be a while before those shows DCI come out. DCI John Luther, one of the Luther, best. Luther, yeah, yeah, watch, watch Luther. TV Luther's TV fantastic, yeah. too. Yeah. British Breakdown fucking killed it. Yeah, man. thanks, man. I just wanted well to talk, talk about my love. Griffin. Well done, sir. And I'm well glad done. that the royal family no, is okay, safe. Okay, yeah. and, 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 and Cody, could you play us out? Bum, 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 bum. All right, and play us right into Sinead's segment today on tv talk she's a big instagram fan she loves her hashtags she loves her stories that's for sure what are we talking about